Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Augmented Reality Podcast for Tuesday, February 13th, 2018. Welcome. This is a presentation of the Triple S League. My name is Ash Ninity, and I'm here, as always, with Cybsidian. Hello, 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 everybody. How's it going today? It is significantly warmed up where we are. I don't know about you, uh, but it's a, it's a welcome change. Um, so, yeah, so we've got a number of things to talk about today in gaming news, but first, uh, some scary uh, YouTuber news that just came out. This is something that happened last month. And uh, when I say scary YouTuber news, I'm not talking about uh, new YouTube policies for once, thankfully. <laughs> um, we're talking about uh, crazed fans and uh, some scary stuff that that crazed fans do. So uh, I'm going to let Saib take this one because uh, he knows more about it. This is, so, this is uh, Gavin Free and Meg Turney. Um, I, I'd say... I'd say... I would... I'm a power couple of the internet seems they're, like they're a, they're big YouTubers. So I, mean, I mean, I mean, Gavin just hit 10 million. So this is this is also like the positive stuff. Gavin, um, a slow mo channel hit 10 million subs. So big congrats to him on that. Um, I've loved the slow mo uh, videos for for ever since he started, and I've been a and we're huge fans of Rooster Teeth. But unfortunately, some um, an event happened in January that's just now being um, this is just now has come out. So, uh, in, in January, a, uh, a, a, a it's not really fan. a fan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I hate I, the term that... praised fan, but that, that's what they call them. So this fan shows up at their house at like three in the morning with a gun, breaks into their house, starts looking for them. They hide successfully, call the police. And within a minute, uh, the police show up. The gunman gets into a firefight exchange with them, and uh, the police um, uh, make a fatal shot on him. So, uh, hor- so th- this is we don't want to sensationalize this too much. This is this is really sad that this has happened, um, that somebody's lost their life over this. But we are very thankful that Meg and uh, Gavin are both alive and okay. Uh, they have responded very briefly to this on Twitter. Um, Gavin wants to say thank you for all the support and concern regarding the recent incident. Uh, it's been a rough time for for Megan himself uh, the last few weeks, but they're they're doing okay. And um, so we we want to throw this out. We want to talk about this because we are huge fans, and this is this is pretty monumental news as far as youtube history goes i don't think that uh, it's, anything it's like this is monumental news we've we've had we've had a, um youtubers have been attacked in the past but there's never been a home break in like this well, and we for... have had uh, like there was the incident with uh, philip defranco's house being burglarized well he wasn't around and i mean as far yeah, as that case then... I, I th- that may have been a random targeting like that might not have been uh yeah, someone um, deliberately going to the the house of Philip DeFranco. And, but then, then there was that incident just a couple of months ago Christine. with one YouTuber uh, <laughs> trying to uh, trying to find and break into the house of another YouTuber and was live streaming it, which is really stupid. But um, <laughs> live streamed himself committing the crime. Brilliant. Yeah, trespassing on the there. property. Anyway, um, and I can't remember the names of the people involved in that, but. This is, um, and I do remember uh, Jack Septicai tweeting out, um, "Hey, uh, your fans of mine, that's great, uh, but that doesn't mean you have the right to show up at my house and, uh, you know, bother me and my family." Yeah, it's, so, it's always good to like give people space. Obviously, it's good to keep, give people space, um, but in in this, I mean, it's this is an issue that like Hollywood um, celebrities have had to deal with, unfortunately for for a long time and like i mean these kinds of stories have gone all the way back to the to the 50s i think um so this is the, this is the first time like a, a a major i would call this a major incident some 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 of the other stuff not not as big as this one because there was a fatality and um, there was a, a clear um just just so you know this guy wasn't a fan he wasn't showing up to get you know a selfie like he from from the looks of it, he he showed up to like, you know, perform a kidnapping and and quite possibly a murder. So it's it, it's um, it's more of a stalking type 
deal. Like, yeah, yeah. This is like Hollywood stalking type stuff. And and I I mean we had that but, thing with Christina uh, Grimmy, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, um. So, so it's not it's not necessarily new, but this is this does kind of point out some some obvious things. Um, it is it's it's unfortunate and. Like I said, we don't want to sensationalize this, but we do want to draw attention to it. We we also want to say that that like we we appreciate fans, we really do. And I know that Gavin Free appreciates all of his fans, and and Meg Turney is is a very fan interactive. Um, like she interacts with fans a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of YouTubers do. And in general, we we were talking about this beforehand. How YouTubers, um, they're not like the big mega movie stars because you you. You know, you don't really know what some of these big YouTubers, uh, sorry, uh, these big Hollywood types are like, right? You you don't really have a a concrete grasp of their personality even outside of the movie roles because you only see them on the red carpet, on you know official interviews, and and it's hard to really get somebody's um, to really understand their personality and their and their character, who they really are, like you know when they're at home. Um, however, YouTubers and streamers and, um, you know, these Twitch people and, and Twitter people, these are all people who spend much more of their personal time, I'd say, you know, being exposed to, to being online, letting their fans in on their, their life a little bit more. So that kind of stuff is, adds to this fact that, that YouTubers do show a little bit more of themselves than, say, big Hollywood types. And that's part of their draw, right? Well, yeah, it's so, this raw, like, you kind of feel like these are just normal people that you can relate to, not just the sort of this, uh, you know, rich Hollywood uh, subculture of just really rich, uh, out-of-touch people, um, which is kind of how I see, <laughs> it's kind of how I look at YouTube these days, but or not YouTube, uh, Hollywood these days, but um, the, but with YouTube, yeah, you have, like, you have people just blogging out of their houses and things like that. And then occasionally Mm -hmm. things happen where they're just not careful enough and they dox themselves or they, you know, accidentally, uh, you know, accidentally, you know, uh, catch, uh, you know, a letter from, you know, their mail in their, in their camera's field of view that has their address or or their, or their friend's mail. And then they, yeah. And they put it, uh, you know, they put, they put this video up online without, making sure that it's safe and so this really highlights the uh the the necessity for security taking your personal security carefully mm-hmm. or, or seriously if you are a content creator for one thing um and but also just it it it, it, it highlights the need to respect these people respect the youtubers that you appreciate as as people who have their private lives and to not invade that you know, it's one thing when they're when they're at a public event and you want to go up and talk to them or get an autograph or whatever. Um, but if they're when they're living their private lives in their private homes, that's a, that's a different thing altogether. Now, of course, we're talking about something. Three o'clock in the morning is not a well. Again, that's I was, not normal in general. I was going to say there. Now we're talking about something that's you know in a much more extreme ballpark because it's not like someone showing up at Jacksepticeye's house looking for an autograph. We're talking mm-hmm. about somebody showing up with a weapon, breaking in, and intent on doing some harm. Um, so obviously, this is a this is an outlier situation, but mm-hmm. it really does highlight the the need for security and the need to uh, you know watch each other's backs. So, anyway, I'm yeah, not sure there's so much I'm... more to say about that other than you know we're glad that uh, Meg and Gavin are okay and uh, that we we you know send our <laughs> condolences uh, and hope that uh, you know they're recovering well from from this is that's got to be terrifying oh yeah it's it, it mean, bumps up your stress like i mean that that bumps up your stress level immensely and i can imagine the kind of um the kind of stress that they've been put under over this so we we hope that they handle it well and i think they have been i think they you know i think they've been uh like i said the, the news literally broke like 16 hours ago so Mm-hmm. So it's Wish been kept best. quiet for a while, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so so uh, yeah. Anyways, on to on to, on to some happier topics. Uh, this is this is the month of reboots. It would look um, that way, yeah. 
like complete reboot. So we had Shadow of the Colossus out on, I believe, the 6th. We've got Secret of Mana on, I think it's like literally uh, comes out tomorrow night um, <clears throat> for the 15th. And then we've got Age of Empires for the 19th. And these are games that are, for the most part, they, they are just complete upgrades of the same game. So mm -hmm. Secret of Mana, especially Secret of Mana, is um, is very, very similar. Like the maps, every single map is very similar to what you experienced in the first game, in the original game, from what we've seen uh, so far. The, they're, it's like, it's improved, it's like cleaned up, um, obviously, but it's just, it's, it's like, it's looking almost identical to the original. Uh, hmm. Age of Empires, it... Um, from what I'm hearing on that is the control, the the feel of the game, the shortcuts, everything works just the same way that it did before. It's just in, improved graphics, cleaned up, um, but it has very much of the same kind of feel. So this this asks the question now: Are we going to see a run of these old games that are that are put into this new life mm -hmm. of having a uh, of having this completely new experience of having reboot to essentially the old game and we've also got Final Fantasy 7 coming out which is you know supposedly they're not changing any of the story it's a complete just visual upgrade and then adding in some you know obviously new voice acting and stuff like that so mm -hmm. that's fascinating to me and then Shadow of the Colossus you had mentioned as well so yeah I think a lot of it depends on how uh, how well these perform uh, I, I mean, obviously, if, if we have these, you know, these three games coming out here in February that are remakes of old games that were very popular in their day and they do very well, then I think we will see a lot more of these, obviously. That uh, uh, that could become the new trend in, in gaming, uh, may, <laughs> what might replace this, uh, this, you know, Battle Royale trend that's, that's continuing to go on. Who knows? But... Um, now the question, uh, uh, the next question I think is, is that a good thing, or are we going to start to see nothing but reboots? You know how for a while it, it was starting to feel like Hollywood was completely out of ideas and just rehashing old ideas, and to some extent that still feels true, but now at least we have, um, you know, other sources, like Netflix is coming up with fairly original stuff, and um, there seems to be some more originally original ideas coming out of uh, mainstream filmmaking as well, and things like that, but... Uh, for a while, it felt like there was just not a single original idea coming out of Hollywood. Um, and I, I just hope we don't ever see that in gaming. Well, I think, I think what we're seeing here, what, what we're seeing with, the, uh, with these titles is they're taking these really good titles and they're just redressing them and adding, um, you know, because there are some titles that you just can't play. Like, there, are, there are some old games that, like, their frame rate, their movement, their whatever. It's like, it's it's darn near impossible yeah, to... Yeah, um, there's that. And they're built for... And enjoy the game. They're built for um, hardware that doesn't exist anymore, that kind of thing. And But some of them are, you know, they're still really good games. And I guess, you know, Nintendo's had uh, a lot of success with their virtual console, um, selling you, you know, the the best games of the, of the NES and the SNES and their older systems... Um, and, you know, asking way too much for them, in my opinion. But, you know, they, they, uh, people are buying them, obviously. And I bought a bunch of them, so I guess I'm a sucker as well. But, um, but these are, these are really quality games that, that, you know, they haven't needed to upgrade them, I guess. But they're mm -hmm. just reselling you the original game. But you're right, like some of these older PC games, um... Or, I mean, Secret of Mana was on the SNES, and now they're they're making a new version of it. But Age of Empires, yeah, you find an original copy of, of, the, of Age of Empires from the 90s, you are not going to be able to play it. That's just not going to happen. So it kind of makes sense that they would that they would remake it for modern hardware. Um, but in, in, in another sense, it's kind of, well, this... There's nothing new there either so i just hope that that doesn't become too much of a trend you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah so it, 
I, I think I think it'll be I think this will be a good thing, mm-hmm. um, because I don't think there's certain games that that I would love to to replay again um, with just an updated engine, but then there's other games where it's like, you know, like uh, Knights of the Old Republic is is a good example. I'd love right, to play yeah. Knights of the Old Republic, completely new, completely redone, because right now I can't like the the. The UI for that game and the the way that you interacted was so terrible. Yeah, no kidding. was was so so bad. But at the time, it was you know it was ingenious. It was it was brilliant. And there were there were a lot of games, and there are a lot of games that are like that, where like the original concept, amazing, and they they come in, they add a new way, you know, new engine, clean it up, and then the game's great. So yeah, we'll see that, and we'll see the. I think we'll see that a little bit more, but I think I think when if if companies try to do it too much, uh, I think the fans will just not be interested. It's like it's like hey, yay, hey, you remade a game that you know you put out six years ago. Um, you know, not not interested in you know we we see that a little bit with this <laughs> with like Skyrim, right? Um, yeah, where it's like it's yeah. like you could only re-release something so many times before the public is just not interested in it. Mm-hmm. Um, however, if there's constantly a new upgrade, then I guess I mean if 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 the price is reasonable or if the fan is there that really 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 wants it, then you know I guess that's doable and and so we'll see. So we'll see how this affects uh, the gaming industry, but um, I mean we we've we've already pre-ordered secret of mana because secret of mana is one of those games where i always wanted to beat that game but i never had the chance um just because it was it was out of my reach um when it came out i just couldn't couldn't sit down and play through the whole thing i could only play it like for an hour or two once every couple of months um and then at some point it was just like you know you couldn't get the machine to run it anymore and then uh and then emulating it was not something I was really that interested in. Um, got busy with other stuff. So it's one of these things where I really want to finish that game. I really want to finish it and be done with it um, in, in a good way. Because it is a good game and there's a lot of... And we're going to talk about this when we stream this. Because we're, it's, it's a multiplayer game and we're going to definitely stream this game. Um, but the ability to uh, to get into this game and to play it and to have fun is something that we're, we're really excited for. So... Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see how that goes. Age of Empires, uh, I I don't know. I right now I haven't decided whether or not I'm gonna I'm gonna buy that game. I was I had a lot of fun with it, and I was really good at the game because it was very strategic. But it, you know, it's one of those things where it's like strategy games have kind of shifted and and morphed for me now. I I I'm you know I much prefer the uh, the 4K kind of turn based games when I'm when I'm looking for like big strategy things like that. I'm I was never one that that moved into like the StarCraft kind of thing. Um, StarCraft's great, but it's I don't know. It it's it just never really clicked with me. So we'll see with Age of Empires. We'll see with these other things. But I think it'll be good. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So, anyways, um, what else is in the news? There's a bit of news uh, around the Five Minutes at Freddy's movie. It's uh, it's gotten a. Uh, it's being produced by a different studio than it was originally, and uh, shoot, the tab that I had the information <laughs> open in, I closed <laughs> it. it. Shoot. Um, anyway, it's it's moved to a different studio, and it's being dire- uh, directed now by Chris Columbus. Mm-hmm. So that should be interesting. So I'm I'm glad that this project is finally moving ahead because I feel that, um, and I I really do hate this when when Hollywood or when big game studios, for example, when they get their hands on this idea, this concept of like, oh, hey, we're gonna we're gonna either do a do a new game or we're gonna do a movie adaptation or something like that. Um, but then as soon as the like, people get in, they're gonna be they're like, oh, let's push the boundaries and let's you know reach for the stars. And then they they reach too far and they can't do it. And then you just sit around and like if they had if they had put out a Five Nights at Freddy's movie like two or three years ago, I think that it would have been probably one of the best horror movies of the year um as long as it was like good as long as it was like a competent movie as long as it wasn't terrible um then i think they would have done well but having wait 
now having waited so long, and I mean, we're still not going to see this this year. Probably not even going to see it next year. Probably going to see it, you know, in 2020. It's like, well, now most of the people who, you know, play this game for the, you know, for the horror and for the scare factor, most of them, you know, are going to be completely moved on from this title now. But I don't know, maybe they'll they'll come up with, maybe it'll they'll time it with a, a, a new update to the game. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so, well, Cawthon uh, keeps saying that the series is over, but he said that multiple times now. And uh... <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he just released uh, Five Nights at Freddy's 6. He just put it out for free. Um, and I guess it was his sort of his attempt to uh, wrap up, to completely wrap up the lore and wrap up the story and answer some unanswered questions. And it's really, mm -hmm. uh, it's now I'm still making my way through the, uh, game theory videos on it. Actually. Um, well, Matt Pat, he did two on them and then he took a break. And so he's still got a, an, another one coming out to try and wrap everything up. But, um, and man, he puts insane work into these, uh, these theory videos about five nights at Freddy. Uh, mm -hmm. Five Nights at Freddy's, and he's done so many over the years now. Um, and they're very... I've, I've been fascinated by the lore of this game ever since I uh, first came across Mark Markiplier playing playing it. It was it was both my uh, introduction to Five Nights at Freddy's and to Markiplier was him playing uh, Five Nights at Freddy's 2. And I just got fascinated by the lore and the story of this game and what was going on, and I just watched so many, uh, so many theory videos on it. And so I think that uh, even if it comes out in in a couple of years, I think it'll still see a good deal of success because it's got such a fascinating lore behind it, and it has spawned some novels now. And and hey, maybe by that time they'll reboot the game, the original game. Yeah, maybe they'll engine. reboot it. <laughs> Just like yeah, they'll, they'll reboot it for VR. Oh man, wouldn't that be crazy? Um, oh oh, VR. Speaking of VR, I a uh, little bit of a. Um, a thing I had mentioned this uh, to you yesterday. There are people who are, I think I mentioned this actually before in the podcast too. There's these um, one of the things on Amazon that keeps getting suggested for me is these backpack VR machines. Oh yes, you, yes. You put on you put on the goggles and then you put on this backpack and now you're able to move anywhere with your VR unit. Yes, this is a great idea. This is such a terrible idea. I cannot tell you how terrible this idea is. I mean... Well, I mean, uh, you could play some augmented reality Frogger and this, you know, yeah. really up the stakes. <laughs> yeah, VR, VR Frogger on real highways. Yeah, exactly. In fact, it wouldn't even the, have to be the, VR. You just... The ultimate permadeath game. Yeah, like, exactly. Oh my goodness, I can't... <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, Friday Five Nights at Freddy's VR. We'll we'll see about that. That's That'll not an be... announcement. That was just me coming with up with that on off the top of my head. But actually, that's uh, speculation, right? That is speculation. But I mean that that could happen. That would be a decent uh, decent way to go for the series. Um, yeah. It's all about the sounds and you know keeping track of what's going on around you. Just listening for the slight you know thuds and sounds of. Uh, something that might want to jump out and kill you while you're trying to do get other tasks done. So, yeah, yeah, interesting. <laughs> that, that that would be freaky. Just thinking about it now, that 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 would be a really freaky thing to uh, to do in VR. By the way, uh, I got I found the information here. So the movie is now, um, so it's going to be directed by Chris Columbus, who directed mm -hmm. movies like Home Alone and the first two Harry Potter films, and. Uh, the production company is Blumhouse, which uh, produced Get Out, Insidious, and The Purge. So, uh, yeah, interesting. Take interesting, that's yeah. take that for what it's worth. I actually like. I really, uh, I really enjoyed The Purge, the first one especially. Well, I haven't yeah, seen the, the third the, one yet. Uh, yeah, apparently the Purge movies have been maintaining a healthy audience, so that that's good news for that. And then if they can incorporate that kind of. Um, you know that level of of clearly that level of you know keeping a series going and, and interesting to the people who are who watch that kind of thing then that then that's a that's a really great sign so yeah and i mean it might be a movie that winds up with a smaller cult following but mm -hmm. um but 
you know, if they if they do some things to to give it a broader appeal uh, to to a larger you know horror movie audience, without while you know while staying true to the story, I think that that it could be a a, a decent success. Yeah, and then that that works. So we'll see how that goes. I'm I'm excited to see how that works. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, in in other news. Germany is considering a ban on loot box games, an outright ban. So this, this came out, uh, late last week on, uh, on the 6th and the 7th. Now I thought I'd seen an update to that that said it, it wasn't actually a ban, but they're looking at, uh, severe restrictions mm -hmm. or uh, things like that. But anyway, legal, uh, as, as we predicted, <laughs> months ago uh governments are taking taking notice and that's nothing new i mean there's been governments that have been uh you know looking at these things uh, especially in light of the whole controversy with ea where this became big news um there there are governments looking at this and saying well maybe uh maybe we should be regulating this or taxing it or something so the the taxing it'll be the big thing um and then the regulating it will be the other so if they regulate it and they they say sorry if you have loot boxes in your game it's got to be you know adult only if they do that then we're going to see a, a major die off of of loot box type mechanics we'll see we'll see them do incorporate other um other forms of doing that but if they if they um tax it like governments tend to do with you know un untaxed resources they might suddenly go, oh, hey, uh, you know, sure, just abide by these rules and then you can sell them to miners. And then in that case, so then we'll see it everywhere because then it'll become casinos. It'll be aimed at everybody, especially at younger people, and they'll be everywhere. Yeah. Um, and we've seen how that affects society in the past, and I'm sure that'll just be the most brilliant move ever. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the whole thing about targeting these at children that is the big issue. In my opinion, um, in my opinion, you know, a, an adult should have the, the the maturity to you know to understand what they're doing and and to uh, not get involved in that kind of thing if they don't have the money for it. And then we can just kill it off through through supply and demand. But then again, there is the whole issue with gambling addiction that mm -hmm. can play into it as well. So, but yeah, I, I'm. Personally, not in favor of an outright ban, um, but but making sure that it's said like that, that yeah it gets a mature rating if it if it has uh, loot boxes or anything akin to gambling in it. I am definitely in favor of that. Yeah, so that's that's a really good point to point out. So, but so anyways, yeah, it. Um... I think I think uh, this is definitely this is definitely going to be something that that will really affect the future of the industry. So, mm -hmm. all right. Well, I think that about does it for us for this week. That's uh, that's the news, the gaming news of this past week. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for those who are watching live, and if you're listening later on on uh, YouTube or on iTunes. Um, Thank you as well. And be sure to check out our YouTube channel. We've got game guides, reviews, all kinds of fun gaming content. And, uh, oh, and join our Discord server if you'd like to talk to us and other uh, fans of the channel, people with similar interests uh, that you can chat with about games, movies, whatever, all kinds of nerdy stuff. Uh, we are just sort of in the in the throes of getting that, that Discord server. Well, it's up and running, but we're sort of finding our legs with it a little bit, but we had a bunch of people join during our last live stream, and that's been a lot of fun. So definitely check that out. Link's in the description below. We'd also appreciate it if you uh, would, if you're on your mobile device, check out our Gawkbox link down in the description. You can support this channel at absolutely no cost to yourself by installing an app through our Gawkbox link. If you would care to do that, we would definitely appreciate it. But most of all, we appreciate your likes and your subs and uh, your comments and sharing this content around if you appreciate it. We do this podcast every week at this time, so definitely uh, we hope to see you next week. 
So I have a quick question. I have a quick question for uh, people listening. Uh, so there's this uh, protest that happens in in Japan around Valentine's Day every year, where um, people are. It, it's kind of a it's kind of a gag protest. Uh, they make signs to protest Valentine's Day. Protesting Valentine's one, Day, yeah. One of the signs is making out in public is terrorism. Oh boy! And so I want to know if I want to know what people think in the comments. Uh, on whether or not uh, people uh, view um, PDAs as uh, as something that should be banned, or or how your reaction to it is, I think that'd be very interesting. I'm I'm fascinated. Okay. By this, so. <laughs> That's quite a can of worms you just cracked open right at the end there, Sib. All yep. right, thanks so much. We will talk to you later.